Packers, and this is Tactical Arms. If you want to learn about Soviet military small arms, you've come to the right place. I'm Larry Vickers, this is Tactical Arms, and the subject for this episode is the AK-74 and the SVD, two Cold War classics that you see nearly every day on the news around the world. To really understand where these guns have come from, you got to go back to the beginning and look at the predecessor. And to really appreciate what these guns are all about, you need to look at East versus West on both guns and look at their U.S. equivalents. Check it out. Any discussion on the SVD or the AK-74 has to begin with this rifle. The AK, or this particular one's an AKM. Mikhail Kalashnikov used his experiences in World War II, his exposure to the German Sturmgewehr, and design features of the M1 Garand and came up with this Battlefield Classic. It's been made in the millions and it's still in widespread service today. It's also the benchmark for battlefield ruggedness and reliability. However, unbeknownst to us at the time, the Russians were closely watching the American M16 and 5.56 caliber ammunition, and that weapon and that ammunition would have a major impact on small arms of the future for the Soviet Union. Let me introduce you to the AK-74, or more specifically, the AKS-74 in this variant with the side folding stock. The Russians felt they needed a small caliber, lightweight assault rifle round to keep up with the Americans in the M16 and brought in some new design features, specifically muzzle brake that makes this weapon combined with the caliber very controllable in fully automatic fire. But there's a downside. Like all muzzle brakes, you pay a penalty in muzzle flash. It's very bright, even in low light, but especially at night. That discloses the fire's position and allows incoming fire to be more directly targeted on their location. That could be a bad thing in a gunfight. While the Soviets took a hard look at the American M16 and the 223 Remington or 556 NATO caliber, a trend started on this side of the pond that would have repercussions felt even to this day. They were looking at making the M16 shorter and lighter, more handy for armored personnel carriers, airborne troops, and other soldiers that needed a shorter carbine version of the M16, and a full-length weapon was just a little bit too big to get the job done. This weapon, in my opinion, best compares to the AKS-74 that I used earlier on the show. This is the CAR-15, semi-automatic form. It's been made in full auto with different barrel lengths. This one has a 16 inch barrel. The most important factor here, this was the father of the M4 carbine that's in service today, which has been modified and adapted to make it the most versatile, modular, battle-worthy carbine ever fielded. One of the things we're gonna do, we're gonna compare the birdcage flash suppressor of this CAR-15 to the muzzle brake of the AK-74. Okay, so if I had to choose between the CAR-15 and the AK-74, this would be my choice. However, when you look at the flash suppressor of the CAR-15 versus the muzzle brake of the AK-74, it gives you a little insight that the American military and the Soviet military puts on the value of the individual soldier. We'll give up a little bit of controllability in a gunfight on full auto in order to mask our location, whereas the Soviets look at it the other way. The value of the individual soldier is not very high, and if he can get more rounds on target before he becomes a bullet trap, they're willing to live with that and the muzzle flash associated with it.
Okay, when you're talking AK-74 SVD, there's some similarities, there's some big differences. This is a sniper rifle or a designated marksman's rifle, chambered in 762x54R. This is a 5.45x39 assault rifle, the first Soviet micro caliber. Operating mechanisms are basically the same. Big difference, gas system. Let me show you. This is the SVD, otherwise known as the Dragunov. The weapon was named after the designer that created it for the Soviet Union when it was fielded in 1963. It's been in service ever since then, and it had a state-of-the-art, cutting-edge appearance then, and it does now. Thumb hole buttstock, ventilated hand guards, long overall length, slotted birdcage flash suppressor, much like the one on an FNFA or M14. It fires 7.62R from a 10-round detachable box magazine. It's semi-automatic only and has an AK-style safety on the side. The bolt and bolt carrier were adapted from the AK, but the gas system underneath the handguards was adapted from the earlier SVT-38 and SVT-40 semi-automatic rifles. The SVD weighs about 9.5 pounds and it has a, roughly a 24-inch barrel. And much like the FNFAL, it actually feels lighter in the hands and has very good handling characteristics. The receiver is machined from a solid steel forging and is extremely lightweight. The Soviets take a lot of material out of it. The trigger mechanism, which has an excellent trigger pull, is detachable. The recoil spring mechanism was taken from the German G43 also. There's several interesting features on the SVD that you don't see on the AK series. For one, it has a two-position gas regulator up front, and like the one on the PKM, it can be adjusted. It has two positions. But like the PKM, you can use the base of a 762x54R cartridge to adjust it when it's too hot to touch. Pretty ingenious. In addition, it has a bolt hold open device internally that when the gun's empty, it locks the bolt to the rear. Put a new magazine in, you have to release the charging handle in order to chamber a new round. It doesn't have an external release like the one on the M16. And also it has roughly the same scope mounting process that the AK family does. It's clearly something that they got from the German G43. And while that might have been kick-ass in 1944, it is way over the hill now, and the Soviets need to update it and should have done it a long time ago. About the same time the Soviets were putting the SVD in the service, the M14 was being replaced by the M16 as the frontline service rifle for U.S. troops. But however, it begun a second life as a sniper rifle, one that it continues to this day and thus the chain remains unbroken. The remarkable story of the M1 Garand, put into service immediately prior to World War II, after the war modified into the M14, and it's still serving our troops overseas and keeping them safe. The modified M14 I'm holding in my hands is an M21, set up the same as I used in Special Forces Sniper School in 1983. It's an accurized M14 with an ARC-2 3 to 9 power leatherwood scope. We felt it was important to show this rifle in this program because in many ways, this is America's SVD. It also shows that we had far greater resources than the Soviet Union, but their ingenuity and their ability to make a weapon that performs as good as the SVD does is admirable and never should be taken for granted. Now it's time for our unscientific tactical arms ballistic test. This time it's the 545 poison bullet out of an AK-74 in East German trim. We're going to compare it to a 62 grain M855 projectile that we fired earlier in the same permagel ballistic gel. We have a high speed camera, 1000 frames a second. We'll see how it shakes from 10 yards uprange.
Okay, here we have our 545 by 39 poison bullet, 52 grain projectile, as fired by the AK-74. Entered here, we had some nice action right here, as you'll see on the high-speed camera, and the projectile ended up over here. I'm going to dig it out and compare it to our green tip. Interesting. This is unscientific test, and this is permagel, clear ballistic gelatin. Doesn't necessarily simulate a human body, but if you look, very similar end result between the two projectiles. And what's interesting to me, this is the lightweight high velocity projectile for the Soviet or Russian military, the East, and now this is the high velocity lightweight projectile for the West, the US and NATO allies. Now, depending on who you talk to, the M855 green tip is worthless. It doesn't get the job done. But conversely, you hear propaganda from the other side that talks about how lethal the 545 is and how it's been termed the poison bullet by the Afghanis. So it kind of makes you wonder what's fact and what's fiction. Okay, we've gotten a lot of viewer email on my approach when taking a kid out to shoot for the first time. This is my son John and this is his Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. Essentially Smith & Wesson's 22 caliber version of the M4 carbine. Really slick gun, a lot of fun to shoot. What you want to do is go out in a very friendly low stress environment and a 22 is a perfect way to do it. Low muzzle flash, low recoil. Last thing you want to do is make this an intimidating, scary environment or situation or experience for your child. So don't come out with a 12 gauge or a .30-06 or your granddad's hunting rifle. That's a no-go. Bring out a weapon that's not very loud, not very noisy, doesn't have much recoil. We want to make it fun. Remember, that's what I, my dad did. He gave me a single shot 22 when I was little, and now I'm on television, so that's a clue. All right, I'm going to talk my son through the basics on getting the M&P 15 up, ready to shoot, and we're going to shoot some steel. Stand by. Okay, John, let's put on your Oakley eye protection, my personal favorite. And that is a set of your dad's Peltors. Got them? Can you hear me good? Yeah. Good to go. Okay, now, safety rules. Tell me the safety rule when it comes to the muzzle. What is it? Make sure you know what the muzzle is pointing at. Exactly. Make sure you know where your muzzle is pointed at all times. Tell me the one, reference the trigger. Finger off trigger until you're ready to shoot. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. Tell me the one about the target and what's behind it. Make sure you know what is beyond your target. Exactly. Make sure you know what's beyond your target and what your target is and what you're shooting at. And then last but not least, when you see a weapon like this, how should you treat it? When it's loaded. Exactly. You always want to treat it as if it's loaded at all times. Now let's get your blaster loaded up here. So go ahead and put your mag in. Got it. Good to go. All right, now go ahead and push that little button right there, and that'll send the bolt home. Now come up on target. Last thing we're going to do is take it off safe before we shoot. I've got your dot on. Okay, line it up on the steel. You good to go? I can't see my dot. All right, well, let me make sure it's on. I can't see it that well. There we go. Got it. Got it on there now? Yep. Okay, up on target, squeeze the trigger. Okay, buddy? Here we 